It's June 15th, 2012. It was the date when first episode of Alex Hirsch's Gravity Falls was aired on Disney Channel. What was originally planned as a simple children's animated show became a classic and one of the best shows of the previous decade, not just animated shows. Its clever writing, humor and mystery attracted the attention of many people of different ages. But we're not talking about the show's greatness right now. You can watch my two-part video essay called Gravity Falls in Retrospective, which I released earlier this year. What we're focusing on now is LGBTQ representation. If you watched Gravity Falls, you know that there are two cops named Blobs and Derwent. They are officially gay and they are even dating. But Alex Hirsch was not allowed to show any representation in Gravity Falls. The channel executives explicitly told Hirsch not to include representation, because the show would get censored or blocked from airing in many countries in the world. Which includes China, Russia, Middle Eastern countries. Losing markets means losing valuable income. Not only international markets were of concern, of course. Many conservative and religious parents in the US would have most likely forbidden their kids from watching the show. All in all, attempts to show representation were suppressed. All Alex Hirsch and his team had were subtle hints now and then, but nothing open or obvious. Blobs and Darwin are gay, it's confirmed by Alex Hirsch. Other characters like Dipper and Wendy are queer-coded. Their orientation is open for viewers' interpretation, even though Alex Hirsch confirmed that Wendy is bisexual on his Twitter. Now we gotta move forward to 2022. Imagine someone falls into a coma around 2014 and then wakes up 8 years later in 2022 and sees this scene. I'm gonna take you out when this is all over, Amity, I promise. No monsters, no mysteries, no deadly duels. It's going to be the most mundane slice of life date ever. And it'll be awesome. I know. Oh, crikey. They would probably get baffled how we came from not allowing background characters to even hold hands to showing a female main protagonist kissing another girl on screen. This is the scene from episode 21 season 2 of another Disney Channel show, The Owl House, released on May 21st, 2022. The evolution of representation happened very quickly. The channel was initially opposed to representation, but Dana won this confrontation with Disney and defended her vision. The result was not unexpected. First some countries tried to censor the show and it looked extremely ridiculous. But eventually the show was just blocked because censoring it became completely impossible. The LGBTQ representation in animation started, not surprisingly, in Japan. The show Princess Knight was released in 1967 and the main character Princess Sapphire was transgender or genderqueer. Across the ocean in the US, queer representation was limited to queer-coded women for the most part. The first show to feature up on a queer character was The Simpsons in the 90s. I'm marrying a woman. I'm... I'm gay. But The Simpsons is not a show for kids, so it wasn't as controversial. American conservative censorship was trying really hard to not let queer characters into the country's media, especially children's media, as it was viewed as sinful. Stuff coming from Japan was also censored. Sailor Moon, for example, became a victim of American censorship, as Sailor Neptune and Sailor Uranus, canonical lesbian characters, suddenly, or not so suddenly, became sisters. What the US was doing in the 90s, many other countries were doing in the 2010s with American stuff. I am giving you some historical perspective so you could better realize how drastically the situation with representation changed in the last decade. June 26, 2015 was a very important date in American history, because on that day the Supreme Court of the country basically made same-sex marriage legal all across the US, which demonstrated how drastically perception of LGBTQ community changed among regular people. 
About three and a half months earlier, in the episode Jailbreak of the first season of Steven Universe, Sapphire and Ruby appeared for the first time. Before that, we only saw them fused as Garnet. Steven Universe episode revolutionized representation and showed the first openly gay couple in a family oriented animation. There were very cool characters before, for example, Mystique from X Men Evolution, who is bisexual, or Cassidy from Witch, who is a lesbian. But their orientation was only confirmed by the creatives of the shows. It was still largely taboo in the 2000s. 2010 saw a crucial change in people's attitude. And as society changed, so did the media. Even though representation was largely a thing for animated shows on television and streaming services, which was a relatively safe bit, many shows can survive on limited markets. Steven Universe was heavily censored in many countries. In Russia, it is basically illegal to show LGBTQ characters to kids because of Russia's law against so-called gay propaganda. The episode where Ruby and Sapphire get married did not air. In some countries, Ruby was voiced by a male voice actor. Because of that, Ruby wears a dress at the wedding. Rebecca Sugar and her team also removed Russia from the map of the world in one of the episodes. In 2014, The Legend of Korra ended. The ending implies that Cory and Asami are together, though the animators couldn't show the kiss, so the characters just hold hands and then disappear into the portal to the spirit world. Adventure Time was luckier. It ended in 2018 and Prisons Bubblegum and Marceline finally had a kiss after seasons of just subtle queer coding. If Cory had more seasons and ended later than 2014, would have certainly seen an on-screen kiss between Cory and Asami. The most prominent representation besides the Owl House was in she and the Princess of Power, created by Andy Stevenson. The main character Adora and her antagonist Ketra are lesbians. The show ends with them kissing each other and literally saving the universe. Besides Adora and Ketra, there are also Spinarella and Natosa, and Double Trouble who is a non-binary character. In 2020, Netflix released another DreamWorks animated show, Kipo and the Age of Wonder Beasts, where the character Benson just plainly says that he is gay. You should know something. <laughs> you like me as a friend? Yes! Because I'm gay. Oh! <gasps> oh, I totally misread your signals. Is it okay if I curl up into a ball right now? If I had my personal experience, this scene completely flabbergasted me as I don't even remember any character in family-friendly animation saying the word gay at all. These days, seeing casual representation has become complete normality, something that was absolutely hard to imagine just about 10 years ago. Disney was one of the last to join. Before the Owl House, there were just subtle hints in the shows like Star Wars vs. The Forces of Evil and DuckTales Reboot. But the Owl House completely changed the game. Disney had to shorten the last season to just three special episodes because of financial troubles, but after Comic Con in October 2022 realized that it was a huge mistake. The show is massively popular and Lumity is the key factor for that. My Little Pony Friendship is Magic had only queer coded characters such as Lyra and Bon Bon until the final season. The final season features Kudo's hands and Lyra Bon was finally confirmed in the episode 24 as Lyra and Bon Bon proposed to each other. Hasbro did enough to hide it and make it less noticeable though. Rainbow Dash and Applejack are implied to be in relationship in the last episode. As I mentioned already, most representation is from TV shows. Movies made for the big screen play by a completely different set of rules as they get way more exposure worldwide and companies need worldwide markets. But LGBTQ characters can put a movie into jeopardy of not being shown in theaters. So there wasn't any representation until 2020 when Disney released Onward, featuring a background lesbian character who barely mentions her partner in the movie. Very easy to censor and replace the girlfriend with just a friend, which many countries did obviously. The same trick was used a year earlier with Avengers Endgame. The first on-screen representation appeared in white here, and the reception of that movie by the general audience was abysmal. 
Not because this movie was that bad, it objectively was not that bad, even though it wasn't good either, but because of representation. Not to mention that the movie was blocked from theaters in many countries. Disney refused to cut a same-sex kiss from the movie. The fate of Lightyear was repeated by Strange World, where one of the characters is openly gay. And this is the history of representation in Western, mainly American animation, in a nutshell. It doesn't really have a very long history, obviously. The change that happened in the last decade or so was absolutely phenomenal. Especially since 2015, which seems to be a crucial year, not just for animation, but for politics as well. Representation matters a lot, obviously, and in the next video I'm gonna show you why.